This is the story of how Bosch was founded, a company that later on managed to maintain a double face during Nazi Germany, making armaments for the military on one side while secretly assisting persecuted Jews on the other. Robert Bosch was born on September 23, 1861 in southern Germany. Growing up, he had a lot of siblings. He was the 11th of 12 children. His father was a farmer, brewer, and innkeeper. Robert was not a particularly ambitious student. After he finished secondary school, he followed his father's advice and pursued an apprenticeship in precision mechanics. On November 15, 1886, Robert Bush, then a 25-year-old aspiring individual, was done with his apprenticeship and working as a journeyman in various companies. So he started the workshop for precision mechanics and electrical engineering in a small backyard in Stuttgart. That workshop later on grew to be the monumental Bosch company as we know it today. In the beginning, Bosch performed all the precision mechanical and electrical engineering work he could get, such as installing telephone systems and electric bills. But it was not until one year later when he presented a low-voltage magneto for gas engines that things started to take a turn. He started installing magneto ignition devices into automobiles and gained a reputation as the only supplier for a truly reliable ignition. Bush officially opened its first factory in Stuttgart in 1901. Then in 1902, Gottlob Honnold, the chief engineer and innovator at Bush perfected the previous low-voltage magneto-ignition system and designed an even better model known as the high-voltage magneto-ignition system with spark plug. With this product, Bush came out on top as the world's leading automotive supplier. He expanded his factory and founded the Feuerbach plant close to Stuttgart in 1906. He introduced eight hours of work a day and produced hundreds of thousands of magnetos. It was in this factory in Feuerbach, and of course with the help of his brilliant chief engineer Honnold, who loyally stayed with Bush until his untimely death, that he first started to manufacture generators and headlights known as Bush lights. These lights made driving automobiles safer for people. The onset of motorization in road traffic made the company grow rapidly. Thus, from 1898 that Bush founded his first company outside Germany in London, he stepped in the global market. Further sales offices followed in other European countries and soon by the end of 1910, Bush was represented in all continents. However, things took a turn for the worse following the outbreak of World War I. In the wake of World War I in 1914, Bush lost most of its international holdings including its US factories. Research and development were interrupted and production switched to armaments such as grenade detonators instead of magneto ignitions. Around half of Bush's workforce was called up for military service and among these conscripts, 453 individuals would never return from the war. It was not easy for Bush to get back up on its feet once the war was over. The company faced many challenges due to the increased competition in the global market and also the fact that its patents had been revoked. However, giving up was not an option either. With benefits of thirst and ambition that Robert Bush had for innovation, the activities formally interrupted by the war regenerated. Old connections were revived and also new markets opened up. Bush expanded its product range to include various automotive technology products intended for safety. By the end of 1926, motorcycle and bicycle lights, the Bosch horn, windshield wipers and battery-powered ignition were added to the product portfolio. One genius idea that Bosch adapted to increase its manufacturers and get right back in the game was the assembly line production. If it formerly took 50 days to produce a complete magneto ignition system, with assembly line it only took 5 days. The ensuing years held many incidents for the company. Bush maintained a face as a right-wing Nazi while operating undercover anti-regime activities. Before we continue, Please support us with your likes and shares if you have enjoyed so far. A major crisis in automotive industry in Germany led Bosch to rethink its product portfolio from 1927 on. 
an innovation came to fruition that would last up to this day. With the further development of diesel engines, which required no magneto ignition, Bosch created diesel injection pump. Power tools, thermo technology, radio and television technology were also new roads that Bush embarked on. After the National Socialists assumed power, under the regime's order, Bush initiated research and development on gasoline injection technology for aircraft engines. Also, the television technology in particular became the focus of military. Bush's foreign sales during this time decreased considerably. These were dark times for the company throughout the Nazi era. On one hand, the company behaved loyally towards the regime because it was systematically crucial as a motor vehicle supplier for them. On the other hand, with Robert Bush's support and in utmost secrecy, the company was involved in oppositional and anti-regime activities. With the start of the Second World War, Bush again switched its operation to military production and armaments. However, the company's automotive activities continued since the army was heavily motorized by that point. The associates, called up for action, were replaced by forced laborers from the occupied territories who were forced to live and work in inhumane conditions. As a part of the company's resistance against Nazis, persecuted Jews were also employed to prevent them from being deported to concentration camps or were supported financially to assist their immigration. Robert Bush died in 1942 after a prolonged illness, and lucky for him, he didn't live to see how Allies repeatedly bombed his production facilities and turned them into dust. The consequences of war were dire for this company. By the end of World War II, a great part of Bush factories was in ruins. Bush had lost its international sites for the second time. Thus, the following decades were devoted to reconstruction. In order to survive the post-war period and for the company to be able to clear up and re-employ its former associates and pay their wages, it had to tackle new lines of business. Initially, Bush started manufacturing handcrafts and umbrellas along with cooking pots made of steel helmets left remnants of the war in the factory ruins. Step by step, the executors of his will reconstructed the company according to the testament Bush had arranged prior to his death. They also managed to channel some of the company's profits into charitable causes, as Robert Bush had wished. The company's global network, which had vanished during the war, gradually took off. As hard times drew to a close, Bush brought various products to market that to a great extent satisfied people's demands. He produced kitchen appliances, drills for do-it-yourselfers, car radios, and electronic components. Bush even upgraded the gasoline injection it had formerly developed for aircraft engines to be used in automobiles. From the 1950s until 1980s, the company transformed more into what we recognize today. New structures and divisions were formed. The research facilities were further developed in an endeavor to turn electronics into a linchpin of the company. In the beginning of the 1980s, Bush ventured into telecommunications and started constructing technology for space satellites and cell phones. The fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 paved the way for the fall of the Iron Curtain. Germany reunified and the political boundaries dividing Europe into two separate areas from the end of the World War II to the end of the Cold War were demolished. Besides, utilizing software opened up new opportunities for Bush. The last three decades have brought rapid economic changes on which the company has successfully faced head, to the point that nowadays there are not many houses in which one cannot find any of the Bosch products. Today, the majority of Bosch Group businesses are classified into four sections. Mobility Solutions Sector, Industrial Technology, Consumer Goods, and Energy and Building Technology Business. Bosch continues to expand and keep up to date persistently. This is how Bush was founded and became the significant brand that it is today. Click right here to check out the story of Sony.